And of course, with the forces of secularization at a public university all around me, I found justification for my lifestyle, as you'll see in this next diary entry. June 1977. Love? A protective response, characteristic of all animals, except expressed to greater levels in man because of his superior intelligence. So what's love? It's just a herd response. And I'm not proud to say this, but it doesn't take much imagination to figure out how I treated women. Cheating on my girlfriend was okay because we are, after all, nothing but animals. Like cats and dogs doing it in the alley. And if a woman was married, well, it really didn't matter because there wasn't anything sacred about marriage. Because after all, the sacred did not exist. I believe marriage was nothing but a social construct made by men to control society. Back to the chart on origins. In 1977, I became a committed atheist. This worldview allowed me to live for the moment, to live for myself, and not to worry about it. Because after all, there is no God and no ultimate consequences. Humans were simply the product of blind chance. We're nothing but animals with physical desires produced by evolution. I graduated from dental school in 1978. This is the official graduation picture, but here's the real one. The party at my house after the last day of school. Now, the guy in the center of that picture gives you the impression that he's having the time of his life. And from a distance, it looked like I was the happiest guy in the world. At 23 years of age, I had achieved everything my culture had told me would make me happy. A job that made a lot of money. Well, dentistry filled that requirement. A fast car. I had a brand new silver anniversary Corvette. Fast women. Lots of those. Booze and drugs. Loved my rum and coke and smoke and hash and sports. I played hockey in the winter and golf in the summer. It looked like I had it made. But if you would have taken me aside and told me to cut the crap and all the male bravado and asked me what was really going on inside my soul, I would have said that there's something wrong with this picture. I didn't exactly know what it was, but I knew there was something missing. The something that was missing in my life appeared while I was serving as a United Nations peacekeeper on the island of Cyprus. I was becoming aware that a self-serving lifestyle focused on chasing after money, cars, women, booze, drugs, and sports was utterly vain and ultimately empty. Intuitively, I knew there had to be something more to life than what my secular culture was telling me. As well, I had this sense of being unclean. I also knew intuitively that the way I was treating women was wrong. Using them merely to meet my physical needs was turning them essentially into toilet seats. The something that I was missing in my life appeared in the pages of the Bible, especially the Gospel of John. I was missing God. I can't remember why I started to read the Bible. There were no major crises in my life. And there were no dramatic spiritual events like seeing angels or hearing voices. As I read the Bible, there was a deep sense that there was something very true about it. It struck chords deep inside my soul. And in particular, there was this sense of being cleansed from the sinful things I had done. So it's in Cyprus that I became a Christian. Ironically, I went there to be a peacekeeper 
But it was there that I met the Prince of Peace, Jesus, who brought an amazing peace to my soul. Now, there's more to the Cyprus story. It was during that tour that I also read another book, Dwayne Gish's Evolution, The Fossils Say No. As a brand new Christian, one of the first questions that I had to deal with was evolution. And because I was trapped in the origins dichotomy, I assumed that I had to reject evolution. After all, it played an important part in rejecting my boyhood Christian faith and becoming an atheist. Gish had a PhD in biochemistry and worked with other scientists at the Institute for Creation Research. His book completely convinced me that there wasn't a shred of evidence for evolution and that evolution was ultimately Satan's doctrine to destroy Christianity in public universities. Back to the chart on origins. By the time I left Cyprus in the spring of 1980, I was a thoroughly committed young earth creationist. Dwayne Gish had convinced me that evolution was a lie from the pit of hell. Upon returning to Canada, I began to attend an evangelical church with a wonderful pastor who preached from the Bible every Sunday. It was a great place to grow spiritually. And being an evangelical church, the majority who attended were young earth creationists. And it wasn't long before I attended seminars on this view of origins and getting involved in the creationist society. In fact, I even published in the journal Creation Science Dialogue in 1981. The title of the article says it all, Philosophy versus Science. I was still trapped in the origins dichotomy because to a young earth creationist, Evolution is nothing but philosophy. It's not science at all. And the word science in my title means creation science, which is the true science. So here I was, still viewing origins as a simple evolution versus creation debate, assuming that there were only two credible positions, young earth creation or atheistic evolution. The origins dichotomy blinded me from seeing other options. I conclude the article, I challenge anyone who prides their objectivity to seriously entertain scientific creationism. It may well be the most important study of your life. And I might add, creation science had quite an impact on my life because once I finished my military commitment, I started on the path towards a career change. I wanted to become a creation scientist to attack evolution in the public universities. When I was on my knees, I had a distinct sense that God was calling me to be a creation scientist. But I also had a sense that he wanted me to do some training in theology on the opening chapters of the Bible before I entered the Institute for Creation Research. It also became very clear that I was being called to study at Regent College in Vancouver, British Columbia, one of the best evangelical theology schools in the world. And as you can see in my diary, I came to Regent College with a grand plan to declare absolute and pure hell on the theory. And of course, the theory is evolution. And the quotation marks are indicative that I didn't for a second believe it had any scientific credibility. Well, what happened at Regent College? I met this man, Lauren Wilkinson, the most amazing university professor I've ever had. He taught us a course on science and theology. The class was filled 